August 8, 2020. We were rejoicing in the fresh manna that the Lord gives each day in our family. And there we were talking, my husband and I. I was telling him about the dream that the Lord had given me this morning, the great meaning it has. And he was telling me a dream, very short, that the Lord gave him, but with a meaning also very great. Now, the dream that I had at dawn this August 8, 2020, I said it already, so you are going to listen to it. But I want to tell you about the dream that my husband had this morning as well. The Lord spoke to my husband about seven things that he had to do to overcome, and that when these were implemented, they would lead to two results, but that it was not to be feared. Because the kingdom was assured for these people, and that so he should remember that they did it to those in the past, and that they were going to do it also at this time, but that he shouldn't fear. In the dream, he tells me that he heard those seven things, but when he woke up, he forgot them. So I woke up in the morning, he started to tell me, he tells me what I have forgotten. So I told him, good, meanwhile you remember I'm going to write what the Lord told me because I have to communicate it to the people. So he began to ask the Lord, Lord, what are these seven things? I know it's very important. You told me, but I don't remember. Let me know. And the Lord did not wait and said to him, those seven things plus the two consequences that will come plus the promise that I gave you at the end are found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12. Fear art beatitudes, read them and understand them. We see there that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12, first I want to read you 3 to 9, that there we see the first seven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, because they will be filled or satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We see here, beloved, that there is a pattern where it doesn't say anything that nobody or someone is going to do anything for this. Simply, it is like our own. It is like personal. They are poor in spirit. They cry. They are meek. They hunger and thirst for justice. They are merciful. They are pure of heart. They are peacemakers. But we see a change when we enter there at verse 10. Here it is no longer just us, but it is putting other people in the picture. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all evil words against you for my sake falsely. Here now. In these two verses, 10 and 11, it is no longer speaking on a personal level, but other people have now entered the scenery. And this is what we are going, or many of us are already experiencing it. But the Lord gave a promise, which encompasses all the previous promises he gave. For in each one of them, he says that, we will be comforted, that theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven, that they will inherit the earth because they will be filled, because they will obtain mercy, because they will see God, because they will be called children of God, because theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven, because although they speak bad, lying, the Lord will be there, and it says, now encompassing all this, rejoice 
and be glad, because your reward is great in heaven, because that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So fear not, don't be afraid, because that's what they did with the ancestors and they're going to do the same thing again with you, or they're doing it with many, including myself. But we must not fear, but continue confident in him. So I had to tell you this because it's been so big for us. We've always read this. As Seventh-day Adventists, we have always known about the Beatitudes, but when the Lord tells us something, and he repeats it back to us, even though we already know it, it is because we have not given it the necessary attention. And it is very important that we pay attention when the Lord puts his finger on something because we have to pay close attention to it. Having said this, beloved brothers, that I wanted to comment this testimony, I leave with you what the Lord dictated to me today at 12.30 in the afternoon. The Lord told me, write and communicate to my people. So fulfilling this task, I let you know what the Eternal has told me that I must say to the people. Trumpets, month 9, day 19 of our calendar for the year 2020. That day is new moon. In the Eternal's calendar, it is the seventh month, the first day. It is a day of rest, with a gathering of the people, with a trumpet blast, with an offering of a contrite and humble heart before him. We find that there in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 to 25. And thus says the Lord, that each person who on this solemn day has to expound the word of God, give the right touch, not seeking to ingratiate himself with man, but with God. Be clear themes with characteristics of life and salvation for everyone who listens and let the Holy Spirit touch his heart. Give heavenly manna with view of the Holy Spirit before the angelic witnesses and before men and the universe. May in your records in heaven be found the word accepted next to each of your names and those you will work for the heavenly kingdom. Great responsibility weighs before you. So do not be like the others, but watch and be sober, because this will be a prelude to what is to come. Pray therefore at all times, and raise holy hands before the Eternal. And the God of peace, truth, justice, and love will give you heavenly light so as to illuminate others. Many like lights on the road and do not want the lamp to light their feet, but one without the other loses value. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, lamp to my feet, light. To my path. I can see a lighted path in the distance, but if I don't see where I'm going to put my feet to get to that lighted path, I'll never get there. We need the lamp as a guide for our daily steps, moment by moment, so that we can enjoy the light on the path. Every torch bearer must sound the right note. No more milk adulterated with human assumptions. God demands a people of high norm to walk towards holiness. And this demands that each one of us to die to our desires and preferences, to our pride and vanity. Dying to self is the key in all of this. Therefore, beloved brothers, we cannot be like the rest, like the many, but we have to be vigilant and sober, as our Lord commands us. So we must prepare ourselves with fear and trembling, feeling like what we are, incapable of anything, and only totally depend on Prince Emmanuel. And so we will obtain his approval, giving this certain sound. Also, 
he let me know, the Lord, that I must say to the people, then the day of atonement arrives, month 9, day 28 of this 2020 calendar. We know that each day we have is made up of 24 hours. First the dark part and then the light part. That is, first night and then day. So there too, we know that the Eternal has educated us and we have learned that each day begins with the part of darkness or night. It begins when the first stars are seen. We must have already learned this and not forget that the Lord is returning us to the ancient paths to get out of the many to join the small herd. So the ninth month, the 28th day of the current calendar that we have is the 10th day of the seventh month in the calendar of the eternal God. As we see there in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26 to 32. But we see there in verse 31, chapter 23 of Leviticus, that this is a perpetual statute throughout your ages or generations in other rooms, that is, where we are found. We must afflict our soul before God. And why? Because we have two major problems among all the minor ones which are now and will continue before us. First and most important, to be or not to be accepted by God and to have our name in the book of life. Second, death decree before us, spiritual salvation, physical salvation, and for both we depend only on being property of God. And with our attitude of knowing everything, the arrogance, the pride, our own convenience, we will not make it. Those who overcome, they will be disappeared because they will be fused with God. Like when there is a big and strong father and his son stands behind him and he is small and thin and cannot be seen. Likewise, it will be the situation of the one who overcomes. Paul said, but it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Everything old is gone. Behold, everything is new. I no longer live in the flesh, but in the spirit. And only in this way, death threats, contempt, torture, intimidation, and manipulation will not be able to move us from the path because your word is a lamp at my feet and a light on my path. And so we are now with the Beloved, crucified together, and we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. This is what will give us victory, the Holy Spirit in us. This day of atonement, day of solemnity before God, it is my request and prayer that none of you give yourself permission to take it on the run and stop taking advantage of this great and solemn opportunity to cast a lot of absolute loyalty to God through a total surrender, going through these necessary steps to be accepted in Christ Jesus. First, recognize our faults. Recognize that we have failed the one who has never failed us. Then, confess to the King of kings and Lord of lords, our Creator, Redeemer, our High Priest, our sins. The Holy Spirit will bring to our memory what has not yet been confessed and surrendered from the heart to the Lord. Then amen. When the Holy Spirit reminds you of some fault that you must make amends with your neighbor, leave everything and do it so that your sacrifice does not remain unaccepted. Ask for forgiveness from the heart, go in peace then to our God. 
If the one you asked for forgiveness do not want to forgive, you did your part and you freed your soul. Then go to the next step. Give your life as a living sacrifice before God. Swear allegiance only to him, even if the heavens fall. Ask him to hold your hand and not let go. And you promise not to let go of him. The next step, beloved, is to believe. Believe that you have been forgiven. If you did it from the heart, with humility of spirit, in penitence before God, recognizing your fault. After this, go to the next step. Work your friendship with God day by day. Pray, talk to him as a friend. Read his love letters, his word. Listen to his words in the whistle of the wind. At that moment when you are alone, at that moment when it is night, that you are quiet in your bed, meditating on the words of the Lord. Listen to him. Be quiet and ask him to tell you what else you need to keep walking in his footsteps. See the Lord in his nature. Take time to be among the trees, among the singing of the birds in his nature. Living like this, we will be surrounded by the heavenly atmosphere and we will live his life from triumph to triumph not human triumph because that is not what we are looking for but spiritual triumph and eternal triumph then let's move on to the next step let's testify let us testify with our deeds with our acts what the eternal does daily in the life of each one of us and if necessary let's say a word that it be of gratitude towards the eternal living like this no power will have the evil one in us loyalty only to god the lord commanded us on this day of atonement to read the book of malachi be sober because it is your life that is at stake, I was told, so that I could communicate it to the people. Depart and do not touch what is unclean, so that you will be ready to remain rejoiced in the Lord. And you will rejoice unanimous in the tenth month, from the third to the tenth of this 2020 calendar, which in the Eternal's calendar is the seventh month, from the fifteenth day to the twenty-second of said seventh month of God's calendar and you will be grateful for the mercies of the eternal towards you every day thus his law will be present same as his statutes and his pillars of faith and his commandments knowing that on said feast both the first day and the eighth of this same month of this solemn feast which we know is for eight days both the first day of this solemn feast of tabernacles and the eighth, I clarify so that there is no confusion. They are solemn. Solemn is before God. There are also Saturdays of rest before the eternal. We will not do any servile work. We will only dedicate ourselves to the teacher's business, to know what is his will in the life of each one of us. So ending this eight days of rejoicing before the eternal, two days later in the calendar of this year 2020, that in the eternal's calendar is the 24th of the seventh month, the Lord convoked his people in fasting and sackcloth for those 24 hours. I repeat and clarify, two days after the Feast of Tabernacles, which in our calendar would be the 12th of the 10th month in God's calendar. It is the 24th, the 24th day of the 7th month. The Eternal convokes his people in fasting and sackcloth for those 24 hours. He quoted me 
Nehemiah chapter 8 and 9. As the people of old built the wall around the city of Jerusalem, so his law, his commandments, his statutes, together with his fundamental of faith, will be lifted before the people that follow him wherever he goes. And he asks for this 24 hours of supplication and prayer that every voice of his chosen ones rise up in prayer and supplication before him because extreme times of great difficulty are unleashed. So pray for each other so that your faith does not fail. It is a day of mourning, crying, and praying for those who were and now are not. It is a day of sadness and consolation in Christ Jesus, reading so his law a quarter part of the day and the other quarter part of the day to confess and adore the Lord. Day of vow of consecration before God, even if that means being alone, humanly speaking, in this journey. Remember his past mercies to our fathers in the desert and the wonders of his power towards them and never forget them because like this peace will reign and will endure in our hearts in these days of great tribulation that are before us. Certainly days of character highly solemn will come to us and only a norm at the height of such an event is the one that will sustain us on our feet. I pray to God, beloved brothers, with great longing that it be so in the life of each one of his children. May the peace of the eternal be with each one of you. Blessings.